was on, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ross. I like games. And today, well, we've got a lot of new Worlds Collide cars to talk about. So one of the things that we need to do is group them together into lovely little groups. And when we've grouped them together into lovely little groups, we can make a move towards having a good old chat about them. And the group that I would like to talk about today is cards that increase the cost of forging keys. Now, to that end, I would like to give a quick shout out to Brobnar, who for some reason don't have any cards in Worlds Collide that increase the cost of forging keys. Not one. None. Boo hiss, etc. We'll get over it. So if we have a little bit of a look at this, you might notice that they start looking just a little bit similar. So starting off, we have the Evil Eye. It is an action card with an amber bonus. And when you play it, keys cost plus three amber during your opponent's next turn. So one way that I like to think about this is essentially a single turn Lash of Broken Dreams. Just like we've seen before because Lash of Broken Dreams has been out a while. One thing that's interesting of course, Lash of Broken Dreams is an artifact. So it goes down exhausted, you have to wait a turn and then you can use it as an action to increase the cost of forging. But you can do it over and over again. This is a one time deal. But it gives you an amber bonus, so I'm kind of alright with that. And then, of course, we can also talk about Lesser Ox Tip. Now, this is a free power zero armor creature with elusive, so you've got to attack it twice to get rid of it. When you play it, you have to purge each card in your hand. This is a little bit terrifying. Purging means it goes away, it ain't coming back, it's purged, it's gone. And it's each card in your hand. There's no saving cards for next turn. Now, as a side note, as a bonus here, it is worth pointing out that that means you're drawing six new cards at the end of your turn. So, you know, there's a bonus. You are completely refreshing your hand. But it has a reap skill, whereby keys cost plus three amber during your opponent's next turn. So, this is very much like Lash of Broken Dreams. In fact, it is Lash of Broken Dreams when you reap, Except, of course, Lash of Broken Dreams is just an action, it's all it does. Whereas this being a reap skill, you get an extra amber because you're reaping and reaping gets you amber. Thing is, it's a free power creature. Now, it does have elusive, like we said, which is fine, but free power creatures aren't that hard to get rid of. Artifacts are much harder to get rid of, so I do worry that this is going to be one of those cards where your opponent just goes, ha! I'm going after it. One of the, what we like to refer to as Burn the Witch card. A great card, which is really useful, but it is in fact a bit too great and a bit too useful. So once it hits the field, your opponent's going to get rid of it. And the problem is you might end up purging a card in your hand that you want for later because you really want to increase the cost of forging keys. And then your opponent destroys this before you ever actually get to use it. And it's a massive backfire. Moving into logos, we have a card we've talked about before that I'm still completely enamored with. EDAI Eddie 4x4. When you play it, you archive a card. It is a free power, zero armor creature, and your opponent's keys cost plus one amber for each card in your archives. This could be over the top phenomenal. Like, this could be just a ridiculous card. Because we don't have many cards that get rid of your archives. That just doesn't happen very much. Your archives are generally fairly safe. Now, the good news is that Dysania has been reprinted in Worlds Collide. It has been confirmed that it will be in Worlds Collide. And when you play it, your opponent discards each of their archived cards and you gain one amber for each card discarded in this way. Dysania is a phenomenal counter to Eddie. Because make no mistake about it, right? If you've got Eddie in your deck and your opponent doesn't have Dysania, which incidentally has been in all three sets now, or some other way to mess with your archives, and you do have a lot of archiving... 
you can make keys cost like 15, 16 amber to forge, more even. There are plenty of decks to look for when Worlds Collide comes out, but an Eddie deck with lots of archiving is going to be phenomenal. But that's not all that logos are getting. They're also getting Universal Keylock. It is an artifact that gives you an amber bonus, and it just says, keys cost plus free amber, after a player forges a key, destroy Universal Keylock. I love this. Because you see, it is just a permanent skill. It's just, it's working. It's not like Lash of Broken Dreams where you gotta play it down, it's exhausted, wait a turn, blah, blah. No, you just use it. It goes down, it is a permanent thing. But it is keys cost plus free amber, it is either player, and when either player forges a key, it gets destroyed. The point here is the Universal Key Lock is great when your opponent's about to forge a key. Make them pay an extra free amber, and then you just get the amber from playing it. It's kind of fun. Moving into the Saurian Republic, we have another card we've already talked about. It is Retor Gallim. I like Retor Gallim. Now, plus three seems to just be the number du jour when it comes to Worlds Collide and increase in the cost of keys, because when you play Ret or Gallim, your opponent's keys cost plus three amber during their next turn. Oh. Yeah, we're seeing that a lot at the moment. But, that's not all. It is a free power zero armor creature. And when you reap, you may exalt Ret or Gallim. And if you do, your opponent's keys cost plus free amber during their next turn. So actually, when you reap, it literally is exactly the same as Lesser Oxtet, but you've got to exalt yourself. Now remember, when you exalt, it means you put an amber from the common pool onto the creature. And of course, if your opponent then takes down that creature, you, you lose. Well, you lose the amber, they get the amber. So you are putting an amber on the board that is there for your opponent to take in the future. That's a little bit sad. But if nothing else, play it and your opponent's keys cost plus three. But honestly, if you exalt this twice and two turns you make your opponent's cost plus three, that's fine. Either you're stopping and forging for a turn or you're potentially giving them an amber while making them pay three more to forge a key, that math works out in your favor. Now, I didn't mention this at the top of the video, probably should have done. Also, shout out to Shadows, who do not have a card that increases the cost of forging keys. They do have a card that decreases the cost of forging keys, but that's not the focus of this video. The good news is we can move on and talk about the Grand Star Alliance, who have free... Starting off, we've got Sensor Chief Garcia. Free power, zero armor creature. When you play, or fight, or reap, keys cost plus two armor during your opponent's next turn. And all right, it's plus two, and we've seen a whole bunch of cards that are plus three. But it's when you play, and then when you fight, and then when you reap. So actually, this is kind of cool. Yes, it's a little bit weaker than some of the other cards in this video, but it's going to come round again and again and again. You get it when you play, so even if your opponent takes down Garcia straight away, you're fine. But you also play it when you fight and when you reap, but no matter what you do, you're getting it. So the chances are you're actually going to get a lot more mileage from this than you are from a lot of the other cards we're looking at in this video. So I'm all in favour of it. Similarly, we can have a bit of a Gander at Quad Recorder. Your opponent's keys cost plus one amber for each house represented among friendly creatures to a maximum of three. That, that's cool. Now, of course, what you really want to do is whack this on one of your creatures and get all three out. Because this is a permanent skill. This isn't a play, it isn't a fight, it isn't a reap, it isn't a when you know. This is just a permanent thing. So as soon as you attach Quad Recorder, your opponent's keys are increased in cost. So the ideal situation is, you've got three different houses represented, you pop this down, boom. And yes, your opponent can destroy the creature to which Quad Recorder is attached, and their keys cost the same amount. And yes, your opponent can play a card to get rid of the upgrade. 
even something like Lights Out. I mean, Lights Out is a really nice example here because Lights Out makes your opponent pick up two of their creatures. But of course, when a creature leaves play, the upgrade is discarded, so you pick up the creature, you don't pick up the upgrade. Lights Out is an in-worlds collide, but there's plenty of other examples. We, you know, there, there's plenty of cards out there. Just an example. The point here is that there are plenty of ways to get rid of it. Because it's an upgrade, you can either go after the upgrade or the creature, and either of them is fine. And if you go after the creature, even if it's back to hand, it still goes away. But you know what? While it's there, it's still good. Remember, the general theory here is you increase the cost of your opponent forging a key, and then at the start of their turn, oh, I can't afford to forge a key, then they can get rid of Quad Recorder, but they've already had to not forge a key. Although, and I will link this video in the description, I did do a video a day or two ago about how you can forge a key in the middle of your turn, i.e. key cheating cards, and there are quite a lot of them in this set, so something to look out for. If your opponent gets with a quad recorder and then uses a key cheating card, it will not be affected. And then finally, we can take a look at Disruption Field. Now, I like this. It's an upgrade with an amber bonus. And it reads, your opponent's keys cost plus one amber for each disruption counter on Disruption Field. What's a disruption counter? Well, this creature gains fight or reap Put a disruption counter on disruption field. So what you really want to do is whack this on something like a Gargantodon. Whack this on a creature that is frankly going to stick around for a couple of turns. And then just sit there and either fight or reap depending on whether you can rely on it staying around. If you're fighting, if you can't, you reap. If you can, you can go ahead and fight. And then every time you use it, your opponent's keys get a little more expensive. And if the game goes on a while and you can get six or seven disruption counters on, your opponent's keys cost six or seven more amber. No, it's not going to happen all that often. But can you tell me it's never going to happen? No, that would be ridiculous. And finishing off with Untamed then, we could have a look at a creature we've already seen, Mustic Mermook. A four power, zero armor creature that reads, each player's keys cost plus one amber, and when you play it, you deal four damage to a creature. This is a weird one because it affects you and your opponent. This is good where you're playing a deck and you feel confident you can rush for amber better than your opponent. Simple as that. If you believe that you're a little bit faster, if you believe that you can rush a little bit better, Mystic Mermook is for you. But this is one that can backfire, you have been warned. And then finally, Vine Apple Tree. It is an artifact that gives you an amber bonus and it reads, Keys cost plus one amber for each growth counter on Vine Apple Tree. After a key is forged, reduce each growth counter from vine apple tree and it's got an action that puts a growth counter on vine apple tree so this is a very complicated card it is arguably not as good as disruption field because it keeps resetting although artifacts are harder to get rid of than upgrades because it says after a key is forged and it says keys cost plus one amber so this is a two-sided card it affects yourself and your opponent in the exact same way so once again, the ideal here is if you think your opponent is going to be forging the next key or the first key or whatever, you sit there with Vine Apple Tree and you try and get a few growth counters on. Your opponent forges, Vine Apple Tree resets, they've had to pay more, you don't use the action until you forge and round and round we go. It is an awkward card. I mean, it would combo really quite nicely with another untamed artifact that we've seen, Heart of the Forest. You see, Heart of the Forest and, you know, Rachel Trimble, quite a well-known player, has been running around doing very well lately with a deck involving this. Each player cannot forge keys while they have more forged keys than their opponent. And it's an untamed one as well. So the ideal here is that you play down Heart of the Forest and Vine Apple Tree, You've got more keys forged, so you know that your opponent has to forge the next key. 
So you sit there playing around with Vine Apple Tree. Your opponent forges at an increased cost because of Vine Apple Tree. You're now allowed to forge because of Heart of the Forest. And Vine Apple Tree is reset. So now you can just roll. Downside Heart of the Forest, not in Worlds Collide. You will need it as a legacy card. Still makes a good combo. Come at me in the comment section. And speaking of the comment section, that is all of the cards we've got coming in Worlds Collide that increase the cost of forging keys. So at this stage, it's over to you to tell me what you think are the best among them and which ones you're looking forward to playing with. Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wussy, where we talk about Keyforge and a whole bunch of other games. And do please check out patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can support the channel, where you get weekly bonus podcasts, etc. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wussy Plays.